This is a video for how to create an inventor drawing sheet showing the dimensions of all four of the cams that you created for the automata box assignment. So to create a new drawing sheet we will go to file and we will go to new and we will go to English and make sure you are ANSI IDW and we will say create. We get our drawing sheet we're going to come over to the um, browser bar we're going to right click on ANSI large and go to delete. We're going to right click on sheet one and go down to edit sheet and we are going to change the size of the sheet to an A size sheet and where it says sheet we will call this cam drawing and say OK and you'll notice that changes the size of your sheet to an A size sheet and then you also have the name of the sheet over here so we're going to place some views first we're going to place the front view of all of your cams and I'm going to start with the eccentric cam and I'm going to say open and you'll notice you have your eccentric cam sitting right out here the scale is at a one to one We'll keep that at one-to-one -one for this cam. We're going to try to make all of them relatively the same size. So we're going to click and hold down and just kind of drag this over here to the left, and we'll let off and say OK. <laughs> and that gives us our front view of the eccentric cam. Let's go to base. Let's go to our magnifying glass. And we're going to place our hexagon cam and say open. Now you'll notice that the hexagon cam is a little bit smaller, maybe almost half the size. Let's come over to the scale and pull down on the arrow, and let's go two-to-one. Let's make that double size, and let's say OK. Next. Let's go to base and I'm gonna to go to my magnifying glass and I'm gonna come down until I see my pair cam and I'm gonna say open and my pair cams a little larger than the other ones so the thing you're trying to do is let's say your hexagon cam you're like well, wait my hexagon cam looked fine when I placed it that's fine you can just change the scale however you wish so if yours looked like this and it was one-to-one -one for your hexagon cam that's fine I'm saying this pair cam looks a little big for what we're trying to do so where it says two to one that means it's double the size of its original shape now when I look in here I can go ten to one like I'm gonna be ridiculous ten to one here I can go oh make that a quarter of the size make it really small now this started out at two to one was where it was now we can use sig figs here and I'm gonna say can we get that down to like 1.8 of its original size that still looks a little too big for me I'm gonna go 1.7 now let's keep it at 1.7 and I'm gonna say okay so you're not bound by what you see with these defaults that we're gonna say okay from there now when you see the red air red box show up we can click and hold down and drag to the left we can kind of drag over and we can drag over here again because we want to make some space over here for our snail cam because we're gonna to go to base and we're gonna our magnifying glass now let's come down here and let's go to snail and I'm gonna say open and I'm gonna click and hold down inside the object and drag over and that looks about the right size that I want so I'm gonna come back and say okay and we'll go ahead and keep that now we want these views to align so once you have all your views placed we're going to align them so when you see this little red box show up right here I want you to right click and go down to alignment and go to horizontal and then you're just gonna tap on the view to the right and tap and what you'll notice from doing that is these views now completely aligned with each other. They're aligned along a horizontal axis. We're going to go to our hexagon. Right click on that and go to alignment and go to horizontal and tap on your pair cam. And see how they kind of start shifting and lining up together? We're going to right click on your pair cam, go to alignment, go to horizontal. Excuse me, I don't know if I clicked on that right. Alignment, horizontal, and tap on your snail cam. Now what you'll notice is these are perfectly aligned with each other. They absolutely cannot get out of horizontal alignment. I can come down here to the pair, to the, excuse me, the snail cam and I can drag up but they stay in alignment with each other. So it's kind of nice. It'll make them perfectly aligned along an imaginary line, just like this. So what we want to do next is we're going to place center marks in the center of these holes. Let's come up to annotate. And over here on the right hand side, if you remember center line bisector at all, we put center lines inside something, there's a center line bisector. Uh, we're going to place center marks. And what center marks do is define the center of a hole. So we're going to click on our center mark object, and you're going to click on the inside of the holes for each one of these. Inside of the holes for each one. So what that'll allow us to do is kind of get an idea of where the exact center of these holes are. Otherwise, we'd be doing a little bit of guessing. Now, when we made the cams, we had to know where the center of a lot of these radiuses were and some of these circles were. So one thing we need to do is on our eccentric cam, we're going to click on the outside of the circle. If you remember making that, the hole was just down from the center of the cylinder we made. And we're going to click on the arcs at the top of these pair cam and on the bottom arc on the bottom of the pair cam because we want that distance from here to here when we place. We're going to right click and say OK. I want you to go up to the dimension button. We're going to click on dimension. And if you remember, 
we want to do the outside of the eccentric of the um, eccentric cam here. So you click on the outside of the circle, and what you can do is you can drag up, and you can see that we are in a diameter here. So that actually is going to be a um, it's going to be a diameter dimension for the outside. So the diameter was two, and we're going to click. Now to make the eccentric cam, we had to find the distance from the center of your um, cylinder on the outside down to the center of the hole. So we're gonna, from baseline, we're going to click in the middle of your cylinder and in the middle of your hole, and we're going to drag out this way. And we're going to click because we had to know the location dimension of this hole. We got the size dimension up here. There's the location dimension. Now what's neat for holes is we can come up here to this button called hole and thread and it'll tell you the depth of the hole. It'll give you the diameter and the depth. Click on hole and thread, click on the hole, and drag out. Now you'll notice that each one of the lines that I've placed are diagonal. These are leader lines. They lead you to the feature. This down here leads you to the hole. You never want these lines to be vertical or horizontal because they kind of start taking on some of your center mark line type examples here. So you always want to make them diagonal. For the hexagon, our main distance we used when we went to dimension is from the side to the center and we drag in. And I'm going to put up 0.5 up there. If you remember, we did half the diameter was from here to here and we made that part. We're going to come up to hole and thread. You're going to click on your hole. Let's drag out this way, and we're going to click. And that was really simple. Remember, the hexagon cam was pretty simple to make. So is the eccentric cam. Note that we are only giving dimensions that are needed to actually dimension these objects. So we're going to go back to dimension. And we're going to go up to the arc. If we needed that, we get a radius dimension. If we can come to here, radius dimension. We need our hole and thread dimension for here. So we're up to hole. I'm going to click here, and I can kind of drag down off of this. And we need the distance from here to here. So we come up to dimension, center to center, and drag over. So we have ourselves um, the dimensions in place for those three. Notice that if you kind of start getting crowded with where your dimensions are placed, you can click on these green dots, which are kind of like joints, and drag these around. If you want to drag these up a little bit closer, you can, um, however you choose to do it. I can drag this over a little bit to give myself just a little bit more room to work on our snail cam down there on the end. So I don't want everything to be so crowded, but I do need to have some space over here on the side and kind of move things along as I go. Now we're going to come over to the snail cam which was a little bit tougher, but it's not really um, super tough with where we're at. So we're going to go to dimension. And if you remember, we had two dimensions we placed on a vertical line. There was a distance from here to here, and drag over dimension from this point to this point, and drag over and snap. So we have these two location dimensions. If you remember, we snapped this up here to the top and then came up to here. If you go back to either of those videos or you look at the drawing that I gave you, um, you can see exactly where to dimension everything. So once we go to, go to dimension, outside edge, remember that was a radius of 0.5. And this one right here was really just kind of by itself. Um, we snapped this in using the arc command and made this tangent. But we're going to go ahead and place our radius dimension for this. And we only have one last one to place, and that's hole and thread. Let's go up to hole. Click on the side of your hole, drag up, and click. And you'll notice that now we have all of our dimensions, and we've done each one of our cams that we created. Now what I want you to do is to go up to text, and I want you to name what the type of cam was. So I'm going to type the word eccentric in here. And one thing you can do before you say OK is just to hold down on Control and say Control A for all, Control B for bold, and then hit oh, uh, uh, I made a mistake. I hit I hit enter after it, so eccentric cam. I hit enter and it deleted it. So I should have just clicked OK. And you get eccentric cam right up here. We're going to right click and say OK. Now once you go into eccentric cam, you can notice that you have this kind of um, directional arrow thing. Just kind of drag that in. There's your eccentric cam. Text. We're going to click on top. Hexagon cam. Control A, Control B. Say OK. Right click and say OK. And I'm going to drag this over. Kind of go ahead and drag this down into here. Have it all lined up. Text, pair cam, pair cam, control A, control B, say OK, right click and say OK, makes it really easy. We're going to just put pair cam right here. Again, text on top of your snail cam, snail cam, control A, control B, say OK, right click and say OK. We kind of drag this up to where it looks like it's pretty much aligned. And there's a drawing sheet. Now, the, remember, the goal of any working drawing like this, again, this could be a working drawing for you. The goal of any drawing is that people should be able to look at this drawing and make this shape from it. We did not give any depth dimensions because that's going to be 
um, something that's dependent upon what the person's designing. But this right here is your equations, and we did this in parametric equations. These are your dimensions for actually making these cams. Someone should be able to look at this sheet that you made right here and make these cams perfectly. So that's the goal of any working drawing. So I want you to put your name and the hour on this. So we're going to go up to text. You're going to tap up here and um, name and write in the hour that you have me in class and say OK and place that up here at the top. And then I want you to export this as a PDF. You can go to File, Export, PDF. You can save this as cam drawings or something if you wish, whatever you choose to name it. Remember, if you're having problems with PDF, you can just go to the Snipping tool and click on New and highlight this and you can turn it in as a picture, a JPEG or something like that. So that's how I want you to go about creating a drawing sheet. So this uh, assignment gives you an idea of how to create drawings, place views, and also how to um, start placing dimensions on a drawing sheet. So this has been a video for how to create the uh, drawings for the cams for your automata box.